Hello, Internet. Welcome to this episode of Ask Quali, your one-stop shop for advice on any topic of your choosing from me, a charming expert on just about nothing. As always, don't forget to submit your questions to bit.ly slash askquali because without your messy lives, I'll have nothing to do except look gorgeous in front of this beautiful pink backdrop. This week's question comes to us from Seeing Red, and she writes, Dear Wali, I am a queer woman in a long-term relationship with a queer man, and every time I PMS, I want to kill him. Is this normal? What can I do? Well, Seeing Red, this question is extremely relatable because I too am a raging maniac during certain times of the month. And I wanna share with you a little bit about my journey in terms of dealing with these things. I don't know if I deal with it the best, but you know, I'm alive. I wanted to clear up first the differences between PMS and PMDD. PMS refers to kind of the whole cocktail of premenstrual stuff, irritability, moodiness, bloating, cramps, fatigue. PMDD is usually considered to be uh, a little bit more debilitating than what we would consider like kind of run of the mill PMS. The, the irritability, the moodiness, and in particular feelings of depression um, tend to be kind of like the foremost symptom. Basically the treatment for both of these things are the same. Severe PMS and PMDD are treated with either hormonal birth control pills or antidepressants, SSRIs. Um, and then there are some general kind of like lifestyle tips that doctors will give you, like avoiding alcohol and caffeine intake, mindfulness meditation, and they encourage you to avoid stressful emotional triggers, which is easier said than done. For me personally, I can't take hormonal birth control and uh, I was prescribed an SSRI actually for this very thing. I was prescribed Paxil. I tried it, it didn't agree with me, it made me quite nauseous. Um, and made that 10 day period actually even worse. So um, I really tried to find another kind of way of dealing with this stuff. I went and spoke to my therapist about it and she gave me a lot of really, really good advice. The first thing that she really suggested for me was to think about my attitude. The idea is, is that if none of the kind of traditional remedies that are proposed will work out for me, then there needs to be a certain amount of acceptance that I bring into my life. The really key thing for me to keep in mind is that these times are temporary and that while I feel um, maybe a little bit more out of control than normal, that these things will pass and it doesn't mean that I'm necessarily a bad person for being a little extra sensitive. The more you feel some irritability and try and squash it down, the more it's going to kind of bubble up and come up in, in ways that are um, you know, less than satisfactory in your life. Another thing to consider is the idea that in this time, we're suffering from an increased sensitivity to things that probably bother us anyway. We can kind of think about this increased sensitivity as almost a, a means to have insight into stuff that bothers us that we're not really necessarily as aware of other times. So we can harness this insight that our hormones deliver us um, by creating firmer boundaries around the things that really, really start to piss us off in this time. It's also a really great time to brush up on your self-care practices. Do the things that really, really take care of your basic needs. I feel like we're really, really bad at this as menstruating people in 2019 because we're all so bossy and we want to accomplish all sorts of things and be seen as productive and be useful people in late capitalism. But we need to take the time to stop and assess what it is that we're missing in these times. And oftentimes when we do have really, really severe hormonal reactions, it is because we're responding from a place of lack. So seeing red, I still really, really encourage you to go see a doctor. As I said, it's important to review these symptoms with a doctor just to make sure that there isn't possibly something else going on with you. Um, 
If you're a good candidate for hormonal birth control, that might be a good route for you. If the SSRIs work for you, that might be a good route for you. But there are these other coping mechanisms that can really, really help. And I encourage you to use these things to supplement whatever kind of prescription-based relief that might be recommended to you. So with that, I'm going to sign off on this episode of Ask Quali. Please, please do not forget to submit your questions to bit.ly slash askquali. <laughs>